That's it. Back to you, Simon. Thank you, Jamie. Yep, this is it. Moment we've all dreaded. Uh, Maxine, we're saying farewell to her after 21 years here at the BBC. She has been at the heart of this channel for many of those. Now, before she goes, let's just have a look at some of her BBC highlights. Bill Clinton says he'll concentrate on domestic issues, but he also inherits the problems of the former Yugoslavia, of Iraq and Somalia. This is really a record-breaking year in British politics. There are 3,717 candidates. That's more than ever before. And the princess is in intensive care. Her reported injuries are concussion, a broken arm, and serious cuts to her thigh. There are, however, reports that her condition is grave. No special ceremonies. There really isn't much being said about this at all on the streets, people going about their normal business. It's another phase in what's being described as the normalisation of Northern Ireland. Hello, good afternoon. The Conservatives say they plan to end inheritance tax on family homes worth up to a million pounds if they win the election. Welcome to Dateline. This week, how does the world react to the shooting down of the Malaysian airliner? Oh, hang on a second, I think we're hearing some news here. It's a girl. Oh my the goodness. The Duchess of Cambridge has safely delivered a daughter, we're hearing, at 8.34 a.m. this morning. That's coming from Kensington Palace. This is coming from uh, the PA News Agency, which has been told by the palace, it's a girl. Reading from an autocue whilst remaining relaxed and confident requires practice and a few basic techniques. You want to look and sound natural, avoid potential pitfalls and all the while engaging the audience. Here we go then, Max. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to my world. What you've just seen is how my hour begins every time I go into the news studio. What you didn't hear was what else is going on in my ear. Because as well as the counting down to the programme going on air, what we also have is the editorial team saying, oh, we've lost that re video report. Could you fill a bit of time? And this is all going on while they're going, five, four, three, two, one, cue. And you've got to look fabulous. The jobs will go at Tata's operation in Scunthorpe and in Scotland. Now, the company is not commenting on the news at the moment, but a source has told the BBC that the cuts in Scotland could see the end of the operations formerly owned by British Steel. Now it's all gone dark. <laughs> I haven't got the money for the meter. <laughs> you don't need one for a broomstick. Now, uh, let's Ooh. get the weather... Well, I made the fatal error of asking you all to tweet your uh, responses and, and messages. <laughs> Way too many to read out. Uh, I'm going to read one. This is from someone you know, Donna Trainer from Newsline in Northern Ireland. She says, an anchor who is distinctive, knowledgeable and flappable and always at ease in the hot seat. And again, Roger Mosey, former boss of ours, dependable, authoritative, warm. And what, what you see is what she is. And it's been a great privilege. Yeah. But, the trouble is, as ever, she has to get the last word. <laughs> yeah, I do indeed, because I didn't want to leave without saying something. This has been the most incredible journey after 21 years. The autocue actually needs to go up a little bit for us. Thank <laughs> you. I did write it because I didn't think I'd be able to say it without that. Um, it's been fantastic. From my first broadcasting job 40 years ago as a young journalist in Belfast during the Troubles and then living and working around the world as a foreign correspondent. I've interviewed presidents, prime ministers, pop stars, movie stars, sports stars, and covered many of the major stories in the last four decades. I single-handedly, as you saw there, presented BBC News during the night of the death of Princess Diana. I've covered the Clinton presidency, the Oklahoma bomb, the trial of O.J. Simpson, and the Gulf War, to name a few. So I've seen political change, social change, and all the highs and lows along the way. And it's been an absolute privilege to bring you the news. And many of you have been asking where I'm going next. Well, 
I've decided to return to the freelance world of factual lifestyle and social affairs programmes, documentaries, a bit of feature writing, hosting and keynote speaking. So I want to thank all of my colleagues here at BBC News. Now, they are the people you don't see because they're here behind me. Um, and they are... <laughs> And you, I suppose, as well. <laughs> and they much. are an amazing team. It's uh, an astonishing place to work, and I'll miss every one of them. Thank you for watching over the years. And I know that the BBC News Channel will only go from strength to strength. So it's goodbye from me. You oh. got through it. Thank you. <laughs> it's Thank been a huge you. privilege to work with you. Thank you very much. And we will miss you, you dreadfully. So, before I go... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually gone. <laughs> well, 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 ready. Let's get the weather. Matt, get us out of this. <laughs> Thank you very much, Simon. Well, no. the forecast no. tears have arrived on Cuba. We'll certainly miss you, Maxine, leaving a lot of warmth in our hearts. Uh, and weather-wise, well, leave you with a bit of sunshine too. And